In this video traders, we're gonna look at primary versus secondary trend. Stick around. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so for more videos from me. I talk about strategy, talk about psychology, talk about mindset, talk about patterns, talk about some rules, some ideas, some stuff. So if you like trading, if you're serious about your trading, I think we are one of the channels out there who takes trading a little bit more seriously. I'm um, not saying everyone doesn't, there's some great, great channels out there, and absolutely there's so many others to watch as well, but I feel like we are at the end of taking things a little bit more seriously. So if you're not a gambler, if you kind of want to take trading a little bit further, a little more serious and committed and professional about your approach, then I think you'll find these videos are uh, valuable to you. Okay, so let's get down to this. Primary versus secondary trend. So what is that and what is it all about? How does it kind of uh, line into our trading and how could we care, uh, why do we need to be careful we don't get tripped up by falling into the common trap? So imagine we're on a daily chart here, right? And now look at the daily chart. No one could really argue this is not an uptrend. We've gone from bottom left to top right and Yes, we've had pullbacks, we've had consolidations, we've had different things on the way, but generally speaking, that is an uptrend. So that would be our primary trend. Okay, so the first trend here is our primary trend is an uptrend. Um, no, 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 nothing to kind of dig into more than that, other than, hey, on the higher time frame, that's what's happening. Now, if we look and we dig down into lower time frames, things start to get a different story, right? Because the primary trend is up. We've both agreed on that. We understand that's probably uh, not really disputable. We could argue oh, it's going to end and all this stuff, but yeah, forget that for now. But now we have kind of secondary trends and a secondary trend is something that is occurring within the major trend. So the secondary trend could be if we looked at this section here, right? Just this section here. And that is, okay, if we're doing a daily chart, that could be 10 days worth of trade, right? And so if we zoomed in on a 60 minute or 15 minute, we could say, hey, that trend is down, especially if we took it to here, now we've got kind of a bit of consolidation at the bottom there. But imagine now that looks like this. This trend is lower. And so the secondary trend here, especially if we kind of stopped it at that point, would be down. And so if you were just zoomed in your 15 minute chart, you go, oh, the trend's down, trend's down, and it's get short, and it's get short these lows, and it's get short and push it without stepping back and going, hey, 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 think about this for a second. The primary trend is up. That's the strongest trend. That's the higher time frame money. That's for hedge funds, asset managers. Bigger money is pushing capital. There's a supply demand imbalance on the higher time frames, and through this period, whether it's a year, six months, whatever it is, this asset has increased in value, or if you're a currency pair, this pair has increased in value. So what does that mean? It means that there's supply demand imbalance. There is more demand than supply, and that has consistently over time, yes, there's been ups and downs and a bit of consolidations, but over time, that has developed into that asset price increasing in value. That's our North Star. That's what we should be kind of filtering everything through. When we go down a time frame, we go, yes, the secondary trend is down, but that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, we, we just need to pay attention to that and ignore the daily. No, no, because if you see from here to here, very often we have the time period where the secondary trend is lower for a few days, for a few days, maybe a few weeks, whatever it is, and then the primary trend eventually catches up with it. And so when you're looking at this, you need to audit and say, hey, what's my primary trend doing? What's my secondary trend doing? And then even going, what's my tertiary or my minor trend doing? And saying, hey, on a five minute chart, in this little block here, it's not trending. It's in a range bound environment. And so what does that mean? Should I, should I be setting the highs? Should I be setting the lows? This is when the puzzle starts to, this is where the fun comes to the trading guys. I'm like, oh, I like trading so much, right? Because the puzzle is to be looked at, interpreted, and you go, right, so what does it mean? You go, okay, so if I assume that this trend is gonna continue, and I'm in this point here, for example, and I've got a primary uptrend, a secondary downtrend, and let's say a kind of minor range-bound scenario, I can say, right, well, actually, this is, a good, this is a good opportunity to trade. Because I know, if you look at kind of general rules of thumb for trading, and I'm using this as kind of a, just a, a cherry-picked example. General rules of thumb for trading, if we break out of a range, and often that range can be left behind and we're gonna continue in the direction. I know that sometimes we get these range break fake type trades. Then we break out of a range, that range is gone. It's consolidation, it's gone, we move. 
And so I can start to add these rules of thumb together and go, okay, I can structure a trade from this. Like, okay, if we break out this range to the high side or the low side, generally speaking, I can think we're gonna break out. However, we are now in a primary trend up. So maybe I want to align with that. So if we break out to the upside, the primary trend bringing up is going to be the rising tide that lifts all ships. That's going to help my scenario. Now, of course, the argument here, as I'm sure some of the comments already, yeah, that trend could end soon. Yes, and that's another topic and that's something else to think about. Hey, how long has this been trend going on? Am I late to the trend? But you've got to make some assumptions somewhere in trading and the assumption, assume you've come to the point where you assume that trade, the trend's going to continue. And now your job as a trader is not just to stab at it and buy it whenever, it's to get on the trend with the least amount of risk possible and structure the trade in the way that you can give you the best risk reward structure so you can risk, least, risk the least amount of, amount of money possible to make the most amount of money possible, right? Pretty simple. So when we get a secondary trend to the downside, we're like, ah, that's a pullback. Then when we start getting consolidation, maybe on the minor trend or the tertiary trend, if you want to call it, now we kind of structure a trade that's pretty good. Rather than just looking at that and buying, let's say we're in a situation where the secondary trend was up and the primary trend was up, then we're, we're chasing a bit. And that might be right under certain conditions, but under other conditions, we might want to wait for a pullback. And so we look at this perfect scenario where North Star, primary trend up, secondary trend down, indicating pullback. Great. So the trend is stretched, pull back a bit, and now the, the, the minor trend is, is range bound. So we go, okay, we've pulled up, we've got the strength there, we've pulled back and wound a little bit, now we've found a base. Hey, primary trend up, second trend has been down, now we look, kind of zoom right in, we see consolidation. I might be in a really good position to buy a break out of that because I put the pieces, the puzzles together. The primary trend is here, the secondary trend is here, this is where we are now. That's much different than buying a range breakout in the middle of nowhere, and maybe you had, you know, maybe you were, by shorting a range breakout here, you know, that wouldn't probably be something you want to do, assuming you thought the trend was going to continue. So this is where the kind of the multi time frame analysis comes in, and it's putting all the pieces of the puzzle together and thinking in terms of okay, what's the what's the main driver of this? Okay, it's a primary trend, and I always go and think, what's the engine for that driver? Oh, it's the interest rates. It's uh, you know, it's, it's the free money coming in, it's the Fed putting in money, it's the good environment, the good economy, it's the whatever, overhang, whatever, there's something driving the market that's normally represented in the primary trend. The secondary trend is kind of how the market oscillates and backfills and some of the sort of smaller term stuff. And that's when you get the opportunities, right? When you've got strong trends like this, that's where by the, the BTFD comes from, nearly said it, BTFD comes from is, Okay, you've got the primary trend, which is so, so strong. Bang, 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 all these tech stocks getting ripped and ripped and ripped. And crypto, when it was ripping and ripping and ripping, that was a primary trend. And the guys were making good money then. We're waiting for the secondary trend to be lower, waiting for that secondary trend to kind of bottom out and then getting involved. Rather than saying, I want that to be up, that to be up, because then they were chasing stuff and those are the guys are getting caught out. So it's playing that structured game, playing that puzzle, putting our puzzles together and say, hey, Primary trend, North Star, secondary trend helps to guide the trade, and then sort of tertiary or a minor trend or whatever you want to call it, a minor market regime as a kind of finer timing tool to help you get in. And that way you can build these lovely trades that are structured in a very nice way where you're risking one to make five, to make six, to make ten in some cases in the right in the right environment, in the right scenario, not always, of course. But that's when you kind of get these perfect alignments and go, yeah, actually I can take that. Or even better, fake out, pulls pull back up, push it back up to the upside. Yeah, I can take that. I can, yeah, I'll, I'll put my stop below the low. Risk is one to the highs of there, it's two to the highs of that, it's 10 to one, structured nicely. Right, guys, primary versus secondary trend. Take care. See you next one. Bye bye.